Some of you may ask, how big is this crime of human trafficking? Please stay away from big numbers. It is a big problem, but the numbers are not reliable. Unfortunately, I must say, we, who seems to be quite knowledgeable in so many of related areas regarding this problem, I can admit we don't know yet. And this is part of the problem. We know that the problem is everywhere and it affects all societies and it affects all cultures and religions. But we only have a, a broad idea, so the various forms and the way it takes place. We are, for the time being, we are mostly chasing shadows and measuring perceptions. This is a serious problem. Why today, in a different context, I made a presentation about the world drug situation, we know exactly where they are cultivated, drugs. We know exactly how they are trafficked. We know exactly the consumption, the type of consumption, the amount, and the number of people. Here we are far from this reality because the world is just waking up to this tragedy. We need to correct the information deficit and we are therefore publishing a report. My colleague has a, a copy of it in draft form. Final will be published within a couple of months. The first global report on trafficking in person. I believe that will give evidence on, on the aggregate and country by country of the legislative measures undertaken, of the administrative measures undertaken, of the number of people who have been arrested, the number of people who have been rescued, the gender, the form of exploitation, the amount of money, and so on and so forth. We started to build evidence. Based on this evidence, we should be able to better assist the vulnerable, mostly women and girls in poor countries. The causes, poverty, is mentioned frequently. Certainly poverty is a condition that uh, generates the vulnerability. And indeed, if this is a recognized factor, more development, greater development, better development would help addressing the problem. But poverty is only one factor. Human trafficking starts in the mind of people. By viewing women as objects, for example, whether in burkas, top to bottom, covered, or in bikini, just very limited uh, covered. The portrayal and treatment of women, uh, either as property or a sex object, is an affront to human dignity and creates both a supply and a demand for women and girls who are traded like commodities. Stopping gender-based exploitation, a major cultural revolution in many countries, but perhaps certainly not this one, but far away, but so many, involving billions, not millions, people. Stopping gender-based exploitation is a noble cause in itself. Stopping, for example, the sale of daughters in a case of hardship is another noble cause in itself. And start thinking, why they sell the daughter, not the boy, not the sons? Well, that in itself is an understanding how severe the problem is and how ingrained the problem is in the mind of people, including parents who are the ones, or villagers, who are the ones who identify the victim to be sold. All of this will certainly help, but there is more. Traders in human flesh are motivated by profits and exploit opportunities. Rising the cost and risk of trafficking will make it, the business less attractive. Therefore, we urge companies, a reference was made earlier to chocolate, but also to garment industry, also to luxury good industry, we urge companies to keep slavery out of the supply chain and slave-made product off the shelves, from footballs to sports shoes, chocolate was mentioned, luxury goods I mentioned, and so many others. My office is working, not only with the labor, international labor organization, but with business groups, to assess what companies are doing and need to do to keep human trafficking out of the supply chain and to help them to do more. We have a code of conduct, but now we are reviewing companies by companies whether the measures which are included in the code of conduct are being implemented. But there are the consumers. Yes, the chocolate eaters. It's another form of addiction. The chocolate eaters. We must ensure, and the, sorry, the consumers. We must ensure that we are not generating demand for goods and services that are stained with the tears and the blood and the suffering of tra trafficking with uh, victims. To the Western man or to the Western macho looking for exotic sex, I suggest keep the zipper up. 
What about protection? We talk about uh, prevention. What about protection? Law enforcement officials must become more sensitive to human trafficking and develop the skills needed to deal with it. For example, distinguishing victims and criminals, very often victims, rescue, because they have no papers, no identity papers, no immigration papers. They are treated as criminals. We need them to we invite them to provide the special, the special needs of women and children to protect the witnesses uh, and to catch the criminals. Let us give you some concrete examples of what we are doing on the ground together, for example, with Stop the Traffic. 